Today we're going to talk about transactions and locking, as that relates to SQL databases. You build your database. You've got a nice, shiny database you've spent hours normalizing and optimizing. It's perfect. And somebody connects to your database. Everything's great. People are using your data, they're retrieving your data, they're adding new information, they're writing things, they're extracting information. It's very well when there's one computer accessing your database, but slowly, over time, your, com your database starts becoming the center of its own little world. More and more computers start accessing your database. And that's where you run into problems that require transactions and locking. So transactions and locking are required to make sure that your data is maintained, that data integrity is assured. An atomic transaction is observed from the outside as a single event. Either the whole transaction occurs or none of it can occur. It doesn't matter how big the transaction is or how complicated the transaction is or how small the transaction is. The point is that the whole thing must occur. Let me give you an example. We're going to transfer some money from your bank account to my bank account. That'll be great. You're going to pay me millions of dollars. There's basically two actions that we have to uh, partake of here. We have to delete the money from your bank account and we have to add the money to my bank account. Of course, in real life, the money actually has to get from your bank to my bank, but let's just assume for the sake of argument that we're at the same bank. This is a simple transaction. It occurs millions of times a day, but there's really two important ways that you can screw it up. If we delete the money from your account, but we don't add it to my account, then that money must go somewhere, and of course the bank would get that money. If we add the money to my account, but we don't delete the money from your account, we've just created money from nowhere, or we've taken money from the bank. Now you can imagine if you're a bank manager, you would probably prefer your SQL engineers to err on one of these sides than the other. But in fact, if you're a bank manager, what you really want to do is to make sure this doesn't happen. You want to make sure that if somebody transfers money from one account to another, the money gets deleted from the source account and added to the recipient account, and to the outside world, that seems to be a single, seamless event. There's what's called the ACID test. They have to be atomic, they have to be consistent, they have to be isolated, and they have to be durable. Atomic means, as we've discussed, that all the changes happen or none of the changes happen. Consistent means that every change must be consistent with the schema. You can't make a change and add carrots to my bank account. You have to add dollars to my bank account. So changes have to be consistent. Changes have to be isolated. Each transaction has to think it's the only thing that's happening, even though that's not really true. For example, when we delete the money from your account, that transaction must think it's the only thing that has access to your account. What would happen if we started deleting the money and we got halfway through and then another transaction actually snuck in and took all the money out from underneath us? We wouldn't quite know what to do because we've removed half the, account, half the money. Did we get to keep that half? What about the other half? What about the 
application that snuck in and removed everything from under us? Did it get some of our money? We don't know. So each transaction has to think it's the most important thing, the only thing in the world. And then transactions have to be durable. Once a transaction has occurred, it should last. One of the ways that you can assure atomic transactions is to make a copy of the data. You make a copy of the data once the transaction is complete, you make that copy the new blessed source that everybody has to use. This is quite an easy way to make transactions, but the problem is that you have to copy everything. In the bank account example, you'd have to make a copy of your bank account and a copy of my bank account. So you end up with a lot of duplicated effort. One way to ensure that transactions pass the ACID test is through transaction logging. You keep a separate record of every insertion, deletion, and update that occurs in the database. The idea with transaction logging is that you can recreate the, any state of the database at any point in time by starting with the initial data set, which you know and you have backed up somewhere, and then by iterating through all of the records that you've got logged. This is a great way to ensure that your transactions meet the ACID test if you have a database that doesn't change very often. You can immediately rebuild the database. You can look at the transactions, you can block any transaction, you can modify any transaction. And it's very simple to write a log file that just has an insert, an update, a delete, a timestamp, the element that was added, the table that it was added to, and so on. Another way that you can solve the problem is through serialization. Once a request has happened, you can block any other transaction from happening until the whole transaction is complete. So for example, if a request occurs, we start an event. We say we've got a request to do something. Everybody else wait. While everything's waiting, all other requests are blocked. You can't request anything else. We're just blocked. No, don't keep requesting things. We're blocked. We're still blocked. But then, once our transaction finishes, we can release our block on all subsequent requests and the request ends. Of course the problem with this is that you leave everything blocked until you've solved, until you've finished the request. And so if you have multiple requests all occurring at once, you need to develop a queuing system or some other system so that the transactions can uh, wait in line until the resources are available for them to work. Another way to deal with it is by putting all of your transactions into a block. The request occurs, you start an event, the transactions occur all at once, and the event's finished, and the request ends. This is usually put together with the serialization that we've just talked about, so that you have a block of transactions. Instead of blocking all subsequent requests, you collect together several different requests into one transaction. Then you block everything else, you fire those off, and then you release that block. What you need to do is take a look at the data at the end of the request. And you need to decide, was my transaction successful? If the transaction was successful, then you can say, I'm going to release the database, we'll carry on, and we'll allow another transaction. If the transaction fails, you roll back the database to the state that it was in prior to the beginning of the request.
Another way that you can prevent transactions from conflicting with each other is a table lock. Table locking is particularly easy in a database like MySQL. You can request two different kinds of table locks. You can say, I want a table lock that will allow me to just read the table. In that case, the table can't be manipulated from under you. When you get the lock, the table state is, is maintained, and while you're reading the table and until you release the lock, no changes to the table are allowed. You can also request a write lock, and this will allow you to make changes to the table with the understanding from all other applications that access the table that the data may be changing because you have a write lock. You have the ability to edit and change the table. The way that you make those specific calls in MySQL is you say lock table, then you give it the table name and either read or write. I should point out that a write lock also allows you to read the table and in fact is a, a read lock provided you don't alter the table yourself. Locking tables is a really good way to make sure you can complete the transaction without affecting any other application and any application that writes to the table should lock it before it writes. In summary, we've talked about mechanisms that prevent simultaneous access to the database. As several different methods are available, serialization, blocking, or table locking. And the method that you choose will primarily depend upon the frequency of updates versus reads.